forest. Where the mist of Lilinoi dwells. I'm really enjoying the sculpture process, you know, and painting it's two dimensionally. And I thought I'd be good at sculpture because when I paint, I, I look three dimensionally at my painting and imagine how what's behind, you know, the arm right over here, even though I'm painting here, I imagine that. I was self-taught. It was a lot of trial and error, a lot of paintings, a lot of trying different paints and different techniques and different brushes. And I've always found trial and error um, is the best way to learn things. And that's why it took years to figure out how to actually work the clay, the techniques involved, um, be comfortable with it, know your boundaries, know your non-boundaries. Spirit of Aloha. It was um, a very special piece to me. For years I've wanted to bring it to a three-dimensional level. And I read about the bronzing process but had no idea what was involved in every single step. Well, there was a uh a piece of bronze that was pulled up off the bottom of the ocean and, and, uh, and cleaned off and it had been in, under the sea for a thousand years and, and now it's uh, standing in a museum in Europe and it uh, virtually unchanged. These bronzes will outlast all of us with no doubt. And some people are going to look at her and just be blown away by the idea of even producing something in metal as complex and as detailed as this. are open I see the light my eyes are open open wide I hear you speaking and I know my feelings and I feel good today from the words you say What I realized is the bronzing process is so intense and just so many steps involved that it's not just coming up and doing what you want in clay. It's also, you have to think ahead and go, can bronze actually be poured like that? experts and people that are that work in this type of medium it's exciting and you learn more appreciation for the other processes involved if I didn't have those guys around telling me wait a minute you're getting way too intricate that's not going to be moldable I would have kept going and going but it's a full moon tonight. it certainly must have some um, special magic to have survived as a process for, for thousands of years, you know. The whole piece has been lacquered, so the silicone will come off easily. And they're going to be all molded separately in pieces and then placed back together. As the
the surf rolls on the shore at Haleiwa. That edition number is finished, then the mold is destroyed, and then they're all unique, and, and, and there's a limited number of them. That's thus the limited edition. When, when this comes out of the mold, petals might be missing. There'll be air, air bubbles in the wax, so each wax is individually tooled and, and uh, finished. Each piece um, begins as a pattern from a mold and from a, an original sculpture, but then it goes through the process of, of pouring and being sprued. The, the tooling, the detail you're putting on it right now on every piece. And then, and then this is actually destroyed in the process. It's lost wax casting. So, so these will be melted out of a ceramic shell and then the ceramic shell is destroyed. No two will really be exactly the same. And yet the process allows for uh, repetition and, a, and making a, an addition. Soften the nail bed back up. Every which way you turn, it, you see something a little different. This is called a sprue. It's just wax that allows the, the bronze to flow through the ends of the pieces. Look at these little hands. They're so cute. They took forever. In the small one, the um, lay is built into the, the structure, where in the large one, the lay is removable. I'm going to blow torch this um, to make sure there's no air bubbles in there. Okay. Then I can go back in. 